Big Daddy here, still stuck in the gnome universe. We're going to leave this universe soon, very soon. But before we do, I figured I would check out the two most popular ways that I have found to find applications. Your menus. Basically, that's what we're going to look at. Menus. And let me start out by saying that when I installed GNOME, I figured I would try it. And I kind of expected it to turn out where I did enjoy it. And I was going to move on and I would be ready to move on. And there have been times in the past week that I've been frustrated with it where I wanted to move on. But the one thing that I have seen is being a distro hopper and an honorary member of the Distro Hoppers Anonymous Club, I personally tend to switch a lot very quickly. And I don't always give something the proper time in order for it to grow on you or for it to show you show you what it can do. So the menu is no different. GNOME itself is no different. GNOME tries to predict what you will want in every area of the desktop environment. That cripples it for a lot of people, including a settings guy like me, because without the tweak tool, GNOME would be useless, about as useless as Unity. But with the tweak tool, it it allows it to have enough settings where if I had everything running properly, I could get by on GNOME. Now, do I love GNOME? No, I don't love it, but there are things that I do like about it. And the menu is one of them. And when I switch from GNOME, it will be the one thing that I miss the most. So when I started out on GNOME, I was looking for, I didn't really want to use the full screen launcher. I was looking for a standard traditional menu. And I did find one. There was many suggestions as far as extensions were concerned in the comments. And it's called Geno Menu. Now, Geno Menu is a standard traditional menu. So let's open up some windows here and we'll get to see, we'll get to see what this is. All right, so the way it comes, and I don't quote me on this being the stock way it comes because I have changed a few things in there. So you know me, I like to touch settings. So the first thing you have here is view, and which brings up a full screen launcher, uh, alt tab type environment where you can switch between your windows, your running applications. The next thing that comes up is the menu itself where you have your recent, you have web marks, you have your file locations, your places basically, without the text. Um, you have your all applications, which you can scroll through. You have frequent apps, you have favorite apps. And what you can do in the settings, which we will look at later, is that you can set this to open, when you open the menu, to immediately go to any of these top three. So when the menu opens, you can have a go to all applications. Or when the menu opens, you can have a go to favorites. Which I have it set to go to favorites when I open the app, open the menu. Down at the bottom, you have your logout and power options, which give you a log off and suspend button without actually having to enable an extension. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, you have a shortcut to the preferences, but you can set this to be a list view or the grid view. You have your search just like you would in any other standard menu. So let's go to the settings themselves. All right. So this has multiple settings, so you can make it look like you want it to look. So you can disable the activities hot corner, which I did not do. You can remove the view button from the panel. This view button here, you can remove it completely if that's what you want to do. And you just check that. And as you can see, it 
goes away. So whichever one that you, whichever item you don't use, you can get rid of. You can change the text to um, whatever you like. I'm just gonna, we'll just leave it on V so you can see what it is, see, see what it does when it changes it. You can change the icon to some some other icon if you want. And the same goes for the apps button and the menu button. So you can remove them, change their icons, change their text. And let me put the view back in. All right, so you can disable the menu button hotspot. Um, and you can disable the menu button shortcut key, which I don't, I'm a shortcut guy, so I don't um, disable that. So the menu layout side, you can either do normal, which looks like this, or you can do compact, which kind of shortens it a little bit, lowers the app size and everything, but I am partial to the normal. So a little bit bigger icons and whatnot. All right, so you can hide the user options in the panel. You can hide the shortcuts in the panel so that if you check this, now there is no shortcuts over on the left. You can change the shortcuts from the places to your favorites. So if you wanted it to open up in all applications and had it set there, you could have your favorites over here, kind of like the cinnamon menu, which I'm not a big fan of. So we're gonna leave it on places. You can do the change the size of the shortcut panel icons. You can hide the category panel. So say you want to have it open up in the applications to display at startup, we'll set it, we'll have it set as all. And then you want to hide the category panel. Then it brings up the basic menu, almost like a slingshot type menu where you can scroll through or you can start typing. Um, but the good thing about this is that it has all these settings that you can switch around and um, make it the way you want it. And I'm, I'm a settings kind of guy. So the default mode, I like the grid. You can put it on list just like we've seen. You can change the amount of columns that you have. So you can raise it from five to seven if you want it to be that way. I like the five. I think the five looks the best. Um, you can go down to three, but it doesn't look good then. I mean, it's kind of like spaced out too much. So I leave it at five. And you can change the size of the grid icons, although I think 48 is good. I think 64 is way too big, especially for the size of the menu. Um, I did originally think the icons on the full screen menu were big, but uh, like I said, it's growing on me. I don't know why. But so you have the width of the application grid, grid labels and the size of the application list icon. So when it's in list, you can change the size of it. And that's pretty much the genome menu. I think it's, like I said, if it is your, if you, that's what you're looking for, a standard menu. And maybe you want to try GNOME, but you don't think you can get away with the, the full screen menu. This is the one you want to go to because it offers just about everything you're looking for in a standard menu. So there you have it. Now, with that said, for the last couple days, I have disabled it and am purely running on the full screen launcher that comes default in GNOME. Because again, I will show you what it looks like when you hit the meta key, you see all of your programs laid out in probably the best alt tab type looking place that you can have. Um, I'm a KDE user normally, and I like the flip switcher, and there's another one that I enjoy, but this one is laid out pretty nice. And like I said, you can close these from here. So, and the more you close, uh, the it will switch to the view itself. So like these will get bigger now. You have your desktops over here, and you have your favorites down here. And when I search, it takes away the view and shows you your applications and it also shows you the file locations. Now, if you're using this on Ubuntu, 
it shows you the applications that are installable through the GNOME Software Center, which is a nice feature, but that's not part of Arch. So, and it also shows you all of your applications in alphabetical order. And I have to say, like I said, and, you know, I just think it looks really nice. And it may have to do with me just it growing on me and... I don't know what it has to do actually with, but I just think that it's probably the most thing that I'm going to miss when we leave the GNOME quadrant. I'm just saying. So there you have a look at the app places, the app menus, the two most popular ones that are out there from a KDE user point of view. No. GNOME is not perfect. No, the full screen menu is it is set up exactly the way I like it with one exception. If I had one thing that I could change, which I do like the dock to dash where or the dash to dock, I'm sorry. Um, normally this is over on the left, but the dash to dock um, extension allows this to be down here. The only thing that I would add to this menu is power options. If you had power options in this menu, you wouldn't need this up here to go to this. And you could go to the menu for just about everything that you need. So I'm going to say, like I said, this is the one thing that I'm going to miss the most about leaving GNOME. So all in all, it's been a eye-opening experience. GNOME has not won me over as my desktop environment of choice yet. But it has a lot of good things about it that I never saw before because I really never gave it a look. So there you have it. Until next time, Big Daddy out.